Hello there, this is Dave Allen for No Stars, and today we're going to have a look at Pixelmator for iPad. We're going to see what I can do with some of the brushes. This is a design that I've been working on. It was something I saw on a t-shirt, first of all, and I took it and I... Basically, I did a uh, mural on a wall. It was uh, Boxing Day, one Christmas, and I was a bit bored, so I went into the studio and got a wall, got my spray can out, and uh, I painted it on the wall. And now what I've done is I've taken a picture of that... Uh, drawing that I did first of all on that wall and I've taken the black areas from this and I'll put it into Pixelmator for iPad and I'm going to do some uh, colouring in and drawing with it and it wasn't too difficult at all to get the picture into this here uh, application and I'll show you how I did that with an another time but let's look at some of the brushes that we can use today so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to set up a new layer there are two different ways of doing that let's click on done for that at the moment to come out the painting area so one way of doing it will be to go to this here and I can choose from putting in a transparent layer I can put in a clipboard if there's something on a clipboard that's a picture I can put in a black layer or a white layer and there are other options that you can use but I don't want any of those for the moment okay so that's one way I put in a different layer also what you get is if you can't see it there's this plus arrow on the left hand side here and let's bring that out so you only see that there some of the time click on that plus there and we've got a new layer at the top there so what I do now is I want to take this layer Bring it down to the bottom there. So I've got the, so the layer at the bottom of the pile. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some painting on there. So let's uh, click on our brush, choose paint and erase. And at the moment it's set for brush smudge. Don't want the brush smudge. What I want to go for is the paint brush. I'm going to go for the sponge brush. Let's change colour because we don't want blue in the background. We want a red. So let's get a nice red in there. So that's a good red. And let's put some colours in there. So we can zoom in onto this a little bit as well and basically put that in that's going in very small that's a bit sort of too small that is for what i want there so let's change that to a large size there and i want to basically just sort of use a sponge brush let's change from a sponge brush to a mixed brush and that gives us a bit, a bit of texture i think another thing i want to do as well is i want to go to this here as well i want to just change the opacity down bring that level down there is pretty low um, because the colour is going in a bit too dark there. So I want to do is I want to click on undo a couple of times, get rid of what I've done already and start again. Undo is very useful. You can go back quite a few sort of uh, levels there. And as you can see, I'm undoing quite a bit of stuff that I put there. I've just undone most of what I've put in there already. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to just go back in there again and start putting some colour in. As you can see, it's going a bit uh, thinner this time, the paint. And I'm just sort of building up the colour a wee bit there. So I'll go through that there and put in a paint in a few places. Let's change from large back down to medium. Uh, put a bit of uh, colour red over there as well. Nice bit of red in and around by the ears as well. As you can see, it's going over the areas into places where I don't want the colours to go at the moment, but I can sort of uh, clean them up afterwards. I've got a bit of red on that uh, there and a bit of red over there. Let's just change the colour again. Go for an orangey sort of colour. And there's a nice sort of orange there, so that's great. And now I'll do is so I'll go back into this again and start putting some orange and put these colours in there. And basically what it does, it keeps my uh, texture that I've put in there with the colours that I've put in on the, on the layer that's above it. And it sort of uh, puts in a background colour to it and it sort of uh, gives it a bit more depth, I think. And we need a bit of orange around this side over here as well. Sort of building up that orange colours there and a bit around by the ears. And let's change it to a different size. Let's go for the small. And I think we should put in just a little bit around the, the top there, around the bottom part of his chin. And have a bit more colour around those, those places there too, look. So there you go, we've got a bit sort of a, a bit of colour going in there. Maybe we want to put a bit of yellow in as well. So we just change this again, so we get to a yellow colour. And we don't want to go too sort of green with that, so we'll bring it over that way a bit. Smooth the colour up there, there's a good yellow look. Okay, so with the yellow there, we can put that in. We've got a very small brush in there. I think we need to go for a medium with this one here. And we just uh, put some of these, fill some of these areas in with a bit of colour there. Give our tiger a bit of uh, bit of zip. So as you can see, it's looking a bit better than when we first started it. So that's uh, how you can use these colours. Now let's go and have a look at some of the brushes that we've got available. Okay, so uh, let's put a new layer in there as well. I'll just put this layer on the top of everything else. I'm going to zoom in over onto a corner over here. So I'm just moving the bit there. I don't want to move. Click on undo. I find that sometimes what happens when I'm actually moving things around is I pick up one of the layers and move it around. And you have to be wary of that. Um, otherwise, you'll end up moving some of the colours that you just painted in that you don't want moved. And let's have a look and see what brushes we can do. So we've got paint and erase. 
let's choose a color we've got the mixed brush on there at the moment and as you see that's the color that's quite light there and it's going to change the opacity of it again let's go to a brush size very small and as you can see it's uh quite easy to get these colors in there and to get different effects that's the mixed brush we can go have a hard brush there so that gives it a different effect we've got a light brush there you go, so light brush in there, and we can go for a filbert brush. Let's change colour so we can see a bit better, put a black in there. Change the brush size there. You can change the brush size by going very small, small, medium, large, very large, or you can actually change it using this size here. If you do it by this one here, obviously you're getting a bit of a clue as to what size brush you're going to come out with at the end there. So there's our filbert brush, and a bit bigger, and we can see what's going on a bit better. So that's a quite a nice little brush to use. Let's just uh, move that out of the way, so look at some other brushes as well. And we'll change from a film up brush to one of the spray brushes. And again, I think there's enough uh, different options that we can have. And I'm going to love it when we get some options for making our own brushes in Pixelmator for iPad. We can create your own brushes in, if you do it in uh, Procreate, you can create your own brushes in Art Studio. And I think uh, Pixelmator for iPad will get it at some point in time. Let's have a look at our stone spray. This is our stone spray. You can see it's a bit wide, that one there. Let's change the size again, make it go very small. And it's quite a nice little spray that is there. You could uh, change that there, get a stone effect with it. Put some grey in there, we're going to get a bit of a granite effect. A little bit of white as well, aren't we, if you're making granite. Let's change it from small to medium. And as you can see, I'm getting a sort of a mottled effect that you get with that there. What would be great is if we could have some of these sort of brushes where we get some splatters and things like that. So let's see what else we can do we've got a gravel one over there let's try the gravel one change the color again let's go down to the black and you see we can basically build this up and get the color that we're looking for by changing the brush size and by changing the colors and put a gray in there and let's paint that a bit large so building the colours up one on top of the other, you're going to get some nice little textures going in there. Sometimes what you need to do is you need to sort of uh, change colours a couple of times to get and build those uh, patterns up there. So let's go to the erasers. And with the erasers we've got a manga eraser, which I quite like. I use that one quite often. And with the manga eraser you get sort of these sort of things happening here. Look, quite a hard edge to it. But we can change the edge with the eraser. So what we can do is it's at 19% at the moment. And that one there is to go really hard. That's a really hard edge. So with the hard edge, you get a complete line where you've put in your um, your eraser there. And we'll change it to a lighter eraser. So let's go for a very soft one. And with a soft one, it's not that much softer, is it? Okay, let's uh, change the size of it to large. It's set at 3%. Well, I'd like to say a bit more control. I'd like to say a bit softer than that, but there you go. This is what you get with an application which is in its first version still. And it's going to get better over time. So, so that's the eraser there. And it's quite easy to get rid of what you put in there that you don't want. So that's the manga eraser. And you've got a few other ones. You've got this block eraser or the kneaded eraser and give it a softer effect. I'm still in that top layer again so I can do whatever drawing I want in there. So that's a carbon stick. That's the effect that gives us on there. Look. And then I can go back to the eraser. Let's go to the eraser again. And this time we're using the um, block eraser. And that's not too bad. That it's, that's uh, rubbing it out quite uh, smoothly. And as I say, if we want to, what we can do is we can change that from smooth to hard or soft to hard. And now it'll sort of rub it out. And it's more effective that way, isn't it? So, so that's with the block eraser. It's still a bit, um, a little bit light in place because it's not a completely hard eraser like you have with this one here. We've got uh, some other ones down at the bottom as well. We've got a cloud eraser. And with the cloud eraser, let's rest that erased out of there. So. so there you go. That's a quick look at some of the brushes that you have available in Pixelmator for iPad. I'd like to see the ability to create your own brushes as you can in some other applications. And I'd like to see a wider range of brushes too. This is Dave Allen for No Stylus, and we're we'll having a look at Pixelmator for iPad. It's a really good application, and it's going to get even better. Bye-bye now.